Well, this is another series of videos in epidemiology. And this is about positive predictive value and negative predictive value of a test. One of the most difficult things to, to recognize about test results is the fact that a positive test result does not always mean a person has the disease. The same goes for a negative test result. Just because you have a negative test result does not mean the person does not have the disease you're interested in. And that's a hard thing to wrap your mind around. Hopefully, by the end of this video and using our examples, we'll be able to identify how individuals can appropriately diagnose or use test results in recognizing an individual's disease state. In this example, we're using urinalysis to identify urinary tract infections. Now if you've watched the other video on sensitivity and specificity, you'll recognize how we are going to input this information into a 2x2 two two table. There were 374 people in our study, and 16.09% of them have a urinary tract infection. So if we take 374 and multiply that by 0.16 zero nine we get sixty now we know that sixty people total regardless of their test result have a urinary tract infection that leaves three hundred and fourteen that don't and if we know that there were hundred ninety two positive tests hundred ninety two positive tests regardless of whether they have a urinary tract infection or not they just the urinalysis said they had white blood cells in their urine we know that there was also 182 test results that did not. And if 161 of the negative tests actually do not have a, a UTI, 161 goes here. And we can fill in the rest of the 2 by 2 table through deduction. 182 minus 161 gives us 21. 60 minus 21 gives us 39. 192 minus 39 gives us 153. And these numbers are helpful in identifying our positive predictive value. The positive predictive value of a test is how we interpret positive test results. Because you only know the test result, you don't know this part of the information in the 2x2 two two table, you're trying to determine that. The positive predictive value helps you understand better how to interpret a positive test result. So out of the 192 positive pieces of paper or test result papers, how many of those 192 actually have a urinary tract infection? And that helps us. Positive predictive value equals 39 divided by 192. 39 divided by 192 is 20.3%. In other words, every time we see a positive test, we can only predict that 20% of those positive tests actually have the disease. Well, that's not very good, and we need to figure out how to make that better. We'll discuss the characteristics of, of, the, of this positive predictive value and how we can improve that positive predictive value so that we can be better diagnosticians. But before we do that, let's talk about negative predictive value. A negative predictive value is the ability to understand that those negative results. So if we fill that information out again, we know that there were 182 negative test results. And if we, at any point, grabbed any of those negative test results, we would know that we have a pretty good chance of identifying some of these 161. The negative predictive value of this test in this scenario is 161 divided by 182 is 88.46%. So 88.46% of the time that we see a negative test result, we're going to know that that person does not have a urinary tract infection. And that's pretty useful. And in this circumstance, a urinalysis is probably going to fill this purpose by using the urinalysis, we're going to be able to identify those 
or what we call rule out those who do not have a urinary tract infection. Positive predictive value and negative predictive value are usually only used when we're dealing with an individual patient to interpret the test result that we have. It seems counterintuitive that perhaps looking at a test result is not really accurate. In this case you can kind of see that illustrated 12% of the time if you have a negative test result you will be able to be or you will be wrong that by telling that person they don't have a urinary tract infection out of 182 times 21 they will have a urinary tract infection and that happens because we're not measuring the actual disease we're measuring some other thing that's an indicator of that disease in this case with urinary tract infections it's probably white blood cells in a urinalysis so how do we improve that positive predictive value so that when we see a positive test we can know for sure that that person has that disease. I'm going to clear these out because a couple of things impact um, positive predictive value. The first is the relationship, keep in mind that positive predictive value is the relationship between this number and this number. The closer we can get this um, true positive number to the total positives, the better off we are. We can do that a couple of ways. The best is to get rid of all of these. The other thing to do is to make this number larger in proportion to this number. And we do that two ways. The first is by increasing prevalence. So the first thing we're going to do is increase the prevalence of disease. Now we can't just give people disease and increase the prevalence. That would be unethical. Instead, what we do is measure only those who have the disease or who are more likely to have the disease. And in order to do that, we just simply use either screening tests or only test people with symptoms or people who we think are more likely because of risk factors to have the disease. Now, if you watch the other video, our sensitivity of a urinalysis is 64.8 eight six percent and our specificity of this test is fifty one point three zero percent now instead of testing the three hundred seventy four people that we did here with a sixteen percent we're gonna say that we're only gonna test two hundred people and then out of those two hundred people fifty percent have the disease we're interested in because we've identified their risk factor out of those two hundred we're much more likely to identify those hundred if we use the sensitivity of this test, we'll know that 65, or out of those 100 people, 65 will have a positive test result. That leaves 35 who don't. And we know that 51 of these people will have a negative, the people who don't have a UTI will have a negative test result because 100 times 0.51 gives us our negative test result. Um, and that means 49 here do not. 65 and 49 is 114 and that leaves 86 here in the negative test results. In this case all we've done is increase the prevalence of disease by testing people who are more likely to have the disease and having a higher prevalence of urinary tract infections. We use the same test with the sensitivity and specificity and our positive predictive value went from 20% to 65 divided by 114 and that equals 57%. So we increased our positive predictive value quite considerably by changing the ratio between this true positive number here out of the total people being tested because the prevalence of disease increased and our test because it's it didn't change the sensitivity, we just captured more of those people because more people had the disease in our study design. So that's how one way the positive predictive value increases is by increasing the prevalence of disease. The other way that we increase positive predictive value is by increasing the specificity of the test. Now if you noticed back in our sensitivity and specificity videos, that sequential testing will do that for you. We'll just do it by using a different test. So 
If we used a different test, maybe a hemocytometer white blood cell count test, our sensitivity would be a little different. We can keep it fairly the same. We'll say about 65%. And our specificity, then, we're going to say is not 51.3% anymore, but instead it's 85%. If we have a test that's 85% specific instead of 51% specific like the urinalysis, even if we use the same prevalence from before, 374 and 16.09%, which gives us 60 people who are ill and 314 who aren't, by having a more specific test, we'll have a better positive predictive value. So if we take that 314 people right here and times that by 0.85, the specificity of the test, we'll find that 267 people will be correctly identified as having a, not having a urinary tract infection. So 314 minus um, 267 and we get 47 up here. Even with a 65% sensitivity, we have 39 people still here and 21. Our positive predictive value, 39 plus 47, gives us 86. And 39 divided by 86, our positive predictive value, 39 divided by 86, will be 45.34. Now that's still not great. You're still not even right half the time with the positive predictive value, but that's keep in mind when we are only dealing with 16% of the population that has the disease that we're interested in studying. If we combine these principles of increasing the specificity of the test and increasing the prevalence of those who we test, we can get very, very close to 100% positive predictive value. This happens quite frequently in general medicine. For instance, if you go to a, if a person with cancer goes to a general practitioner, they would they could do many tests and if a test comes back positive, it doesn't necessarily mean that they will believe that that person has cancer yet. The people who they see don't have cancer all the time. Their prevalence is low. The positive predictive value of those tests is not as good. That's why they always send you to a specialist if they're concerned, because in the specialist office, almost everybody who they see um, has cancer, or, or many, many, many of them have cancer. And so when they do the test, they are doing it on a different population, and they're much more likely to believe a positive test result and move forward with treatment. So that happens quite frequently. Also, um, specific, more specific tests um, are used as, as follow-up exams. If you go in for an initial screening, let's say for colonoscopy uh, or for colon cancer, they may initially do what's called a fecal occult test, which is test blood in the in the stool. And that's not very specific. There's lots of things that could cause blood in the stool besides cancer. But it's a good first test and then the second test, a colonoscopy, is much more specific because they're able to actually look at the cell walls uh, of the colon and identify polyps or cancer. So this happens frequently in order for us to diagnose people correctly by um, interpreting those positive predictive value and negative predictive value values of a test.